Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Hey, welcome to the latest edition of the Ages of Rock podcast. I'm one of your hosts, or co-hosts, I guess, Dennis. And we have Bill and Alan with, as usual, all three of us this week. We are going to be um, here in a little bit. We're going to get uh, Jacob Harper uh, on the show with us. He is a luthier here within 10 miles of my house. It's a luthier. And a luthier is a guy It's who that builds. guy that plays guitar in Toto. <laughs> it's steve luthier i thought i was like a lutheran without the n on it but I, i've never i don't know what a, i don't know what a luth i don't I, honestly okay i'm not being a smart luthier ass. is what a, is a luthier is a person who builds guitars really yes that's, that's what is, there's an actual wow. term for it so anyway he uh but anyway he i met him a color of a year a little over a year ago actually it'll be two years in, in spring but anyway he, he built me a custom guitar and he builds custom guitars for other people so he'll be on here talking about that how i got started and all that jazz and all that cool stuff so basically you're saying you paid him four thousand dollars to be on the show no i paid him three thousand dollars to be on the oh show. sorry <laughs> <laughs> three thousand exactly it's, actually. it's actually our, our first paid guest <laughs> pay anybody else no actually i paid three thousand dollars for a very very nice guitar and it's it's a very well built and it's it's a it's a sweet it's a sweet axe it's so, beautiful you know, it is it is a nice it's axe. cool man I don't even pl- I don't even play guitar. Know nothing about it. You know that we have that. Yeah, discussion. he's built some other pretty, stuff, and he built. And actually, actually on this show, you get to see his first. Actually, we're the first people to see it, other than his people that work there mm-hmm. or him, his acoustic that he's making. And my wife just told me the other day. She goes, "If you want it, order one." And I said, "Kel, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not spending five grand on a." On a, on a hey, ask Kelly if she'll buy it for me. Yeah, I'll, you know, I don't. <laughs> I've only got two. It's a trap. It's a trap. I don't. I don't, it's a don't, trap. Don't do I don't even have one, so I deserve to get one. It's a trap. Don't, then I'll start taking lessons. Maybe that's yes. my problem. All the other ones have been too small. That big body we need. That that would be better. Maybe that's my issue. You no. Know? Other other small things <laughs> stuff doesn't bother you, so why would a guitar bother you anyway? Hey, I got, <laughs> I got big hands; and they need big things. Anyway, no. Anyway, the thing was, I you know, hell, I learned on a really cheap twenty five dollar guitar. So you don't you don't need an expensive guitar to learn how to play. You need hey, a, if you're older, you a need a more expensive plays. guitar to learn how to play. That's true. Okay, <laughs> so shut up. <laughs> All right. Well, enough about that, because Jacob will be on here in a little bit and be talking about that. So, what is going on this week? I have I some music news that's not really rock related, but it's okay. kind of it's, oh, it's depressing uh, news. Charlie Pride passed oh. away the other day at age oh. eighty six due to complications of COVID. I did yeah. see and that. And while he is not a rock musician, he was, you know, a pioneer. He was the first yeah, black yeah. country artist to make it really big. Right. So uh, our thoughts and prayers and good vibes and all that stuff go out to his family. He now. actually, <clears throat> excuse me, just uh, he did a kiss of angel good morning on the, the CMAs just here a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's not because longer. he got the 2020 CMA Lifetime Achievement Award. Right. So, I mean, he just, I mean, just, just performed here just recently. Right. Uh, it was, How did he just now get that? He's been, a, he's been around forever and a day. I don't know. Wow. We, uh, <clears throat> it was funny though, because we, uh, when I was a kid, we had dad had a few eight tracks out in the garage. You know, I said, I'm going to go out there and work on my car. We had, we had a uh, uh, Waylon Jennings, we had a Mel Tillis, and we had a Charlie Pride. <laughs> so, so I know Charlie Pride's songs very well. Yeah, I think Kalijah was on there. Was that, is that how you say that? Kalijah or Kalijah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, one of those. He, he did I'm a version. Sure. Of it depends on what part of the country. Oh, did he, did he originally write that or was that somebody? Did he cover that? Who wrote that? You know? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a, a couple of rockers. Person. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Actually, don't that know. was was that Hank Williams Jr. that wrote that? 
Probably not. No, it was. Oh, it was probably you, Hank Williams. If, if, or Hank Williams, probably. If, if Charlie Pride recorded it, Hank Williams Jr. did not write it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> there's, there's a gap there. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but anyway, I, I do. I am familiar with his music, and I hate see. I hated to see that. So. But you know, it could have been a remake that he did, though. Um, that was. That was. I don't think he wrote that. I'm going to have to. Well, it it could it could have been Hank Williams' song, that charlie redid this, that's very possible i don't know you can't now, i can't even spell it so i can't look it up so, now so, is gonna look it up <laughs> so this is do, 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 do. and dennis is silently talking into his phone that we can't hear okay well he's looking that up there you go we'll, we'll talk about something else we'll talk about something so today i was listening to um our friends from uh uh hair what is it hairnet radio is that right yeah that's what it is and um they uh they were playing yeah. a song by mitch malloy called anything at all from his first record back in 1980 whatever it is and uh man i realized i had that i remember having that cd when it came out it's probably in the 90s actually right. and um i love that record and uh i'm pretty sure it was in my office <laughs> and you know every now and then you get a little turned it up a little bit and i was like oh i wonder if they can hear that in the hallway <laughs> hmm. so uh, you know they probably just, did anyway my, real, my office door sure. stays closed so if they can hear it in the hallway i've got it really loud well my office is closed too <laughs> i don't have an office i just walk around anyway um i did look it up and the first thing that popped up was there was a uh youtube link to hank williams senior so yeah. it's probably him i, I was right think, i would think that you're probably right on that i never get the i, I can't I, will, I do not get the rock stuff right but by god well I, I can't confirm it but i, I know no idea. He, it could have been written before him i don't know but i doubt it I yeah it could have been yeah so anyway but anyway uh that i've got i don't i do not have any albums this week i have got i have uh two i have four albums coming from um the, the kathy and, and ashley's uh, auction I did not get over this weekend. We had, this has been a really bizarre weekend. We had some family issues. And um, so I didn't get to go over on Sunday. And I was going to try to go, t actually tonight after work, I was going to try to uh, buzz by and pick them up. And then of course, you know, work put me late tonight getting home. So I, I called her, I actually called her and said, man, I'm sorry. I said, I'll, I will get there at the latest Saturday to pick up my stuff. Have you paid for them yet? No, I have not. I asked oh, her. Oh, that's said, probably, okay, that's different. Like, no, and I said, you, I, said, you want me, I said, you want me to go ahead and pay over the phone? She's like, no, nah, don't worry about it. We'll get it. I've done that before. Just give her my cool card. But anyway. And then she cussed him under her breath as she was hanging out. <laughs> but so hopefully he, Sunday. You know what she said? You know what she said? He ain't no Brian Harris because he picks that shit up like that. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to, uh, actually Saturday, I was going to go over to, Rodney went to um, Book Broker and he actually got, Got a couple of nice albums, and he said they had a, they had a bunch of cheap trick there, which I've got almost all of them. He said the what is the one that has the flame on it? Do you guys know offhand? I, I uh, is that all shook up? Is that what the is the flame on that one? If it is, then I've got that. I thought I okay, didn't then think that's I had not it. it. But anyway, but anyway, he said that the one that has the flame on it was on there. So I don't know. I was going to oh. go over and check out what they had, and all mine are in pretty good shape. So I don't think I really need to replace any of them. But I was going to run over there. So I, probably Saturday is going to be a good run because, like I said, this weekend was just a cluster. cluster it's on lap of luxury. Okay, I do not have that one then. So, but anyway, um, so yeah, I didn't get any records, but I've been looking. I, well, I, I did, but I haven't received them yet, and I'm still waiting on Donnie B. Come on, Donnie, send me my record. <laughs> I haven't got. I haven't. I haven't gotten anything new lately. I've. So I have yeah. to wait now. I've been. We're a couple weeks from Christmas, so I've been kind of banished from self-imposed yeah, banishment but i have listened weird. to i've starting to listen to the stuff that i purchased the nine ten records that i bought it's kind of hard to listen to so i've right. i've been trolling through them i have saved um so out so noah came home yesterday which was awesome oh i saw that from, wearing yeah. his ages of rock shirt well, that's right he was the he the first that's the first thing i noticed <laughs> he walks down the tunnel in the airport and i'm like dude look at the shirt <laughs> anyway um i listened to started listening to my garth brooks stuff tonight and then i'm saving the uh hotd so that no one right. i can listen to it sometimes so i don't know that'd if be that'll good. be tonight or maybe when he gets back he's heading to florida because he right. was home for two days and <laughs> that's way too much <laughs> so so my plan is hey i remember I got, those days 
Yeah. Uh, no, my plan is because I got this, I took one of my old um, metal uh, ones that I was doing that holds, you know, maybe, I don't know, 50 records or so. But I'm going to take some and then keep it downstairs with my other stereo. So the, the new stuff I get is going to go in there because I'll probably listen to it downstairs before I'll listen to it up here. <clears throat> so I've got to, I'm like you, I got to do some listening. I did open up, uh, Kelly wanted some Christmas music the other day. I said, hey, we've got the Charlie Brown record. Let's yeah, how that. was that? You know, so, yeah, it sounded great. Yeah, it sounded real good. It's on uh, cool. green vinyl. And uh, I saw where Ace come out with Oh, you get to version. see that? The, the red and green vinyl? <laughs> come on, dude. It's like, dude, I already got I already got one version of it, actually, and then, then traded out another one, so I don't need Yeah, and then like, I saw really. somebody post, oh, well, this will be my third or fourth version. I'm like, really? It's the same damn record, people. <laughs> but, but you get hey, a Christmas card with the first 500. Right? But do you know if you're going to get it or not? <laughs> Who gives a shit? I know. I don't care. <laughs> Apparently, some people do. That's great. I'm glad you Okay, if so you, if you enjoy okay, collecting that stuff, that's awesome. There's another thing. I know one of the KISS groups, the and, I, and I, I'm not ragging on people, trust me, because I, I like records. But they, they talk about variations. Alan's got his. Alan's muted, so we think he's, he was just giving you crap, so it yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> well, it's good because my throat was all scratchy and stuff, so I thought like I got that smoke. Me <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> they're always talking about variations of the KISS records, okay? Oh, yeah. So they had this thing out the day, and the fucking dude, I don't know, you, you, I know you guys seen it, but they, they had the two labels, and they're, they got a micrometer, and the, the type was like point zero something <laughs> difference <laughs> between one to the other, so they considered that a, 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 a variation. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a variation in the print. Fucking, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Gravy. It's a variation in Gene's wallet. It, it made it a little bigger. <laughs> it's he wanted another one. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I, I can see you doing so, but that's. I mean, that's that's just ridiculous, dude. That's a micrometer. It a it's like going. <laughs> the type was just the a, font was stretched a little bit. Air bigger. Yeah, I know. It's like oh, I know. It's that like, ain't all that's been stretched. If you get my, dude. I know. Yeah, it ain't anyway, all I mean, and, and, and that's bigger. no, and that's no disrespect to the to the collectors who who no. look for stuff like that. That's fine. I just find it funny. I'm like, going, dude, I don't, <laughs> I don't, and I don't need the red and green version of Ace's album either. I've got one copy. I'm good. So, yeah, I bought mine on CD just because I wanted the. You didn't buy the strength. record? No. Okay. Yeah. I All didn't. Right. I was going to, but then I listened to the CD and went, mm. I'd buy it for she only. <laughs> like, she came on all, but came on my album too. I know. I said I would buy it for she only. Oh, I got you. I got you. That's the reason I got it anyway. Yeah. Is, oh, by the way, anything? there is a there is a Ace Freely date out for Lawrence. I, I did. I saw that. Um, which yeah, that was a, that's like sometime in April. April. April the tenth, the day yeah, after actually, my birthday. I'm actually off sometime in April. Well, I think if, I'm off the nineteenth. If it, if a show actually appears, we will have to go mm -hmm. celebrate your birthday. But no. I would not hold my breath on that. What date was that you said? The one? April, April, April 10th. 10th. Damn, it's on a Wednesday. What the hell they do that? I have to, I'm going to have to go work. You know, I'd have to take two days. You know, that, you know the only reason why they did that is so, because you'd have to take off work. Well, the problem is I can't drive with the hour difference. I can't get up there in time. So I'd have to take off the day of It's the pretty concert. far over there. It's the, and it, then you're I'd in Ohio. To, right. And then I'd have to take off the next day because I don't want to drive home and, you know, three hours and then four i'll probably be closer to four wouldn't it it's going to be a while over there yeah, yeah cause it's it's there's no direct route unfortunately you have to go you know yeah. one way or another so anyway anybody else got anything else anything pertinent to need to get out this week negative no negative. sir we should right. go ahead and roll so let's talk to jacob about some guitars hey welcome back to the ages of rock we are here with our esteemed guest, Jacob Har Harper. I was going to say Jason because that's what I always do. But this is Jacob Harper from Harper Guitars. How you doing today? Great. How are you guys? Doing Good. great. So about, let's see, I, I picked it up in November when I got it. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember when I first came out to your place? I don't remember. It was... Lord, it's I don't know. Five months before that. So. Yeah, I was going to say it had to be in the it was spring, wasn't it? Probably mm -hmm. in the springtime. So, what had happened was I had been, you know, I've got a few guitars and I've been, 
I was thinking about buying, I was like, I was looking at Les Pauls and a bunch of things and I was like going, you know what, I, I just don't want to buy another guitar that everybody has. So I was like, man, I just like to be able to have something different, something unique, you know, or, and I wish there was somebody around here. And it, for some reason, within a couple of weeks on Facebook, I saw somebody had posted something about a uh, Harper guitar and I'm like, homemade or it was a it was a uh, handmade guitar and i'm like that's really cool and and then i started doing a little bit of research and i'm like going boonville indiana hell that's 10 miles from my house it's like i gotta go check this shit out so anyway i i called you on the phone and i said somebody i'm wanting to come out and see he said well come out to the shop and we'll talk you know and see what we got so uh i made the trip the long trip to boonville <laughs> And uh, I had something, I had went to your website, you had a website, or you still do, but I went, I went to your website and looked through your guitars and I had an idea of one that you had and I was, I had this grandiose ideas in my head, I was going to change a bunch of shit and all kinds of stuff. And then when I got out there, you started showing me some of the ones that you had and, and the one I was talking about and I talked about, yeah, I'd, I kind of like to have with one pickup and, you know, the one kind of like an old Charvel and you know, a bunch of stuff that would, which you can do, it would just cost a lot as far as uh, redoing your tooling and all that stuff like that. But you said, come here, I want to show you something because I think I got what you're wanting. <laughs> so why don't you tell us, why don't you tell the rest of the story from there? Cause I'm really, I think you remember it. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, we had started that guitar for a certain person and um, they backed out all of a sudden and pretty expensive guitar. Um, it, you know, it was, quite a, it was great that you were in search of a guitar and that one fit, fit your needs. Uh, but it was so custom, you know, I, I don't know how, it, if it fit your needs or not, or it was just good looking or you know it it was there <laughs> well, and, and it was unique that was the whole point about it it was unique and when you showed it to me you had the neck actually hadn't been cut yet you had the blank out for it you did have the uh, i think the fretboard was cut you did have the uh, headstock piece i believe cut and then the body was basically not i'm not saying done but it was it was it hadn't been routed yet for the pickups but the you had the the wood the laminate tire or not laminate but you had the top put on it with mm -hmm. the uh, the inlays but it was funny you lo I looked at it and I kind of like well you know that's kind of cool and then you took this rag and you put that with the oil on it and you you wiped it on that thing I'm like oh shit it popped and I'm like going that looks cool <laughs> that's what I'm looking for yeah it's been years of just experience and you know looking through wood and you go to a sawmill you you can't you know you can't ask them to plane every piece out there so you can get a look at it so you have to kind of just see cues and wood um i don't know that's like a skill that's kind of developed over the years but that was a really cool piece that was uh, uh we put it in a vacuum chamber it's buckeye burl and it's really it's like cork it's really brittle and um, so you put it in a vacuum chamber with resin to kind of solidify it and you cook it uh, and then it hardens you know you put the epoxy you mix the red epoxy on yours into it and then you just use it like a regular blank and, you know carve the top and put it on the body but uh, I haven't done one since and it's odd that we're doing the show because I've started another one we just got a commission for one so and he kept showing me pictures of yours. He goes, I want like this. And I was like, yeah, I built that one. Yeah, I know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, you had showed me some more. You had some more of that, that uh, the burl wood out there. I remember you showing it to me. And you had some blank, you know, you stuff where you could make some stuff. And I know you had talked about it. But I know you've been, you've just been busy as, as a beaver anyway. And, yeah, it's a roller coaster. It's times of, you know, right. work up to my neck. And then other times worrying, you know how we're going to get through it all. Right. And of course, with everything on, on top of, you know, COVID. And I've right. got two kids, a five and nine year old, <clears throat> and we're virtual schooling both of those. Right. And, and so we're, I'm always running in and out of the house, <laughs> making sure they're on their online lessons. And, uh, my wife and I kind of team up and 
do the best we can. Right. So, we, you know, you and I have talked, you know, like I said, because I've been out there a few times and we've sat down and talked to stuff, but just, I mean, for everybody else, I mean, how do you become a luthier? I mean, is that something that you wanted to do? How did you get into this? Well, um, I grew up around craftsmen. Uh, my dad had uh, eight brothers and um, almost every one of them were very skilled at something, you know, carpentry, fine woodwork, ma machinery, you know, so, and most of them were musicians. So growing up, when I started learning an instrument, I had to learn really quick if I wanted to sit in because we'd have big family get togethers and there'd be 20 musicians just is like you know a wrestling match everybody waiting to get tagged in so uh I, don't, I grew up around that and then I concentrated on architecture I worked as a project manager in architecture designer for probably 20 plus years so I had the computer knowledge 3d modeling background um, I played music since I was a little kid um, so at one point I got the bug to, you know, start woodworking and maxed out credit cards and bought table saws and filled up my shop. And um, I actually made a couple pieces of furniture and that was great, but it, it wasn't fulfilling because you, you'll give that piece of furniture to somebody and that may be the last time you see it or it may be in, you know, their house and you get a chance to see it later. But um, I, 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 I wanted a Les Paul and so I bought the blueprints and I modified everything that I knew about Les Pauls and wanted to change so my first one was quite modified um, and then I got the bug you know eight or nine guitars later you know my wife and I recently married and she was kind of like you need you need to sell some of these because it's an expensive hobby um, and sold my first one to Alonzo Pennington and my second one to Uncle Cracker's guitar player. So Kevin McCreary and I just, I have enough, uh, I don't have many friends, but the friends I have, I'm lucky enough that they're in the right positions to introduce me to people. And that's what's really helped out in uh, getting a no name hobby you know, hobbyist, uh, taking it to the next level and trying to get my work, you know, the builds out there. Right. No, like I said, the, uh, when I was, I was just astounded. Like, so when I went out there and seen your shop and, and I mean, like I said, we're just talking, you know, you're, you're out in Boonville. It's a little two story, um, you know, building behind your house and you're, you're, you're building the stuff, but the quality that comes out of that thing is just incredible. I mean, I mean, like I said, I, I looked at what you had a lot of stuff in, you know, in, in partial, you know, beginning stages, you know, ending stages, you had a couple of, or middle stage and you had a few in the ending stages. And then especially when I got mine, you just start looking at this thing. I mean, it's just a really, I mean, I've, I've shown it, everybody I've shown it to, they just, it takes them a couple minutes just to look at it and they go, and they, they don't even know what to say. It's kind of like, holy shit, you know? <laughs> and, uh, what's that? Can I see it again? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right here. Like he I said, it, he doesn't bring you out. He doesn't bring it out there for you for its annual. Uh, I I went out. I brought what it the out. What's wrong with you, dude? You got to take I, it out no, there. I, every now I brought it out one time because when we first, when you first did it, you had different knobs on it. Mm -hmm. Remember, and the knobs when you drilled them out, somehow they they were I don't know they were wonky a little bit, and mm -hmm. I, I didn't like the way they set. So you went ahead and you put these different ones on there, and then while you were there, you went ahead and du and double checked it, dude. This thing has actually it's been in. The thing so much i have not played it hardly any i've been dealing with a bunch of uh arthritic issues and stuff i mean i, I didn't i need to get it back out and play it and i just been kind of been lazy but i mean it does it there's not a scratch i just keep it you know as nice and beautiful as it as you know and this i got out tonight was playing it on man this thing in place it just plays so good <laughs> it's, it's just incredible like especially up on the I know we're not a visual show a long time, but like along the on the edges here, all this work along the uh, the fretboard and stuff is just just incredible. Well, thank just you, man. Love that thing. Let's well, love for, it. for somebody that doesn't know diddly squat crap about guitars, <laughs> um, that's it's impressive, dude. It, the artwork and the uh, craftsmanship, at least from a 
like I said, a non guitar player's view. Um, it's pretty sweet. I haven't seen a lot of guitars much sweeter than that one. So, um, and I've heard him, you know, he, he tickles around on it every now and then and, and acts like he's playing something. I can't ever figure out what the hell he's playing. So I don't think he can really play, but that's just my opinion. I'm a, I'm a hack at best. Anyway. <laughs> so, so did it, Jacob, did it start in your garage then? Is that where it kind of started? It just started. And is that where the, is that where the shop is now? Is it just connected to your house? It's part of the, is that, or do you have a shop shop? Well, it's, it's a big brick building. It's yeah. detached from the house, but, uh, it started in a garage in Paducah, Kentucky, and uh, we moved up here uh, 12, 13 plus years ago. So and you moved from Paducah, Kentucky to Boonville. Yeah, I was working at an architecture office in Evansville and um, didn't really like what we found around Evansville. And for the money, we, you know, bigger place, better shop. Sure. In yeah. Boonville. Makes Small sense. Kind of like where I came from, Katie's. Kentucky, so used to go down there dirt biking a lot down at. Uh, so, what were your school. musical? What were your musical influences growing up? I mean, you said you listened to your parents. I mean, your your family all played. Was there, you know, outside of them, what were your influences? Oh man, uh, just bands that I, I listened to and inspired me were you know all the favorites: Ze Zeppelin and uh, Jimi Hendrix and Van Halen. Uh, my youngest uncle was not much older than me, uh, and he was big into Van Halen and Kiss. And he, I think, he had like a life size, you know, the poster, the Kiss poster. But um, I, tons of bands when I was growing up that I loved listening to, um, and then being around my family, you know, it, it was, I was just immersed in music. Cool. Right. So we, you were talking about uh, the the guy from Uncle Cracker, but you've you've actually made some guitars for a couple other people we may know too. Also, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> want to yeah. talk about somebody else? Uh well, I I feel really fortunate to meet the people I've met, and uh, I've got great friends in the industry uh, that've gotten me hooked up with uh, Alex Lyson. Um, let's see, Three Doors Down, KG Elephant. You know, and, and also, uh, within the past 10 years, I started building for Newman guitars. Um, and Ted Newman Jones was uh, Keith Richards, uh, guitar tech for many years and, and Ron Woods. And, um, yeah, so we, uh, we worked, uh, the current owner of Newman found me through a friend and built a prototype and. Ted was uh, on his last leg and was battling cancer and uh, I built a prototype and Ted signed off on it and passed away soon after. Uh, so I've gotten introduced to several people through Newman. We built for Tom Petty right before he passed and uh, Billy Gibbons. And, uh, we, we, Harper, have been building for Warren Haynes. Uh, lots of great people. Yeah, the ones. So, are you still doing the Newman Newman stuff? I know. Last time I talked to you, you had just finished. You did a pair. You did a. You did one for Billy, and then they were going to do what an acoustic gig or something, and you built a left-handed, right-handed, and a left-handed. Yeah, it was a solo tour, so they didn't have Dusty on bass. Right. They had two guitars, and Matt Sorum from uh, Guns N' Roses on drums, and every other band. <laughs> yeah. he's, prolific. he's played a day or two <laughs> those so, are some great names i mean you got um, good gravy man that's um there that's that's a pretty good legacy i mean that's i mean a pretty good <laughs> list there of, of, of people that you've built some guitars for it's a good there's start a, there's a whole lot of people that'd be pretty they'd be pretty anxious about hearing about that that's for sure yeah it's that's really cool pretty humble i know that I know that we showed your guitar to somebody on the show. Who was that? Was that to one of the oh, guys? Oh, Philip and all those guys. Was it Philip and those guys? The, the, those guys they, were the, they were pretty jazzed about it. So Well, yeah. now, actually, we had uh, Chris Henderson on the show. Right. And, all those dudes from uh, yeah. Three Doors, doors Down. Down. Yeah. No, 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 but we had the guys. Remember the guy from, uh, oh, damn it, Steve Wright had us on, had those guys on, remember? And he, he said he wanted to buy it. He wanted to buy it, remember? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
Uh, what was that? For? What was that from? All right, keep oh, going. Gosh. Get on I'll the find it. Ca yeah. Carl Kennedy. Yeah, oh, that's Kennedy. Right. Kennedy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I actually, was. Carl offered Dennis a dollar. <laughs> He was, I don't know what he was thinking about. And then he, he was on. Then he was on our buddy's podcast a couple of weeks later. And even on that podcast, he offered him a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> he is or something like it. that. <laughs> he put, was pretty put funny. the zeros behind it. What I would say. But, but he showed him that guitar, and he was like, "Oh my god, it's beautiful." So I, you know, it's it's, it's just incredible. The artwork is incredible. So yeah. I do I do go to your website every once in a while, and I have been. And uh, you were you were doing some acoustics. Did you did you do some acoustics? All out acoustics. Um, I've got my first prototype sitting right here and, uh, wow. so yep, yeah, uh, you guys are the first ones to see it. I haven't posted anything about it. We we're trying to keep it secret. Um, uh, but, uh, we're going to have to post something soon. Right. I made yeah. this prototype and, uh, we've been doing, uh, road repairs for the Avid brothers and, uh, hopefully we'll get this in their hands and see what they think. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's taken months just to come up with all the fixtures and jigs. Uh, it's a oh. jumbo. I like it's the huge. cutaway at the top of the arm where it doesn't cut your yeah, arm. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like the way you is that satin on the back. No, that's that's a full gloss. Um, okay. I'm trying to get it to where it shows the wood. Okay, I can yeah, see, you can it see now. the wood. Okay, it's I can good see it now. Yeah, but, uh, it's pretty. It's I love that. I love that cutaway, and I love the part where you, it doesn't rip your arm apart when your arm comes around the strum, and that little relief on the on the front side there. Right. That's so awesome. We did, the, we did the arm contour. Love that. But we also did a belly cut. Yeah, for some of us who have the belly. <laughs> yeah. well, that's that's yeah. where my man titty can hang over. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh. It, we work on a lot of guitars. Um, sure. Any week we'll have 20 plus repairs come through everything from minor setups to major refinishes. And um, so when we build our acoustic, uh, I wanted to take care of every th issue that I've had trying to repair other people's acoustics. So, you know, it's a thick guitar, it's a jumbo. So right. you know, we put the, arm and belly cut in to make it really comfortable and that's what everybody that's played it through the shop says you know even though it's a huge guitar it fits right in you it feels like a parlor almost right uh, then we're we've got a cool bridge i don't know if there's any out there um so we're thinking about a patent um but it's a fully adjustable acoustic bridge wow that's interesting yeah you better get that patent right now yeah, <laughs> somebody else will see that and we'll wait till next third. Get it before next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. And when you that... first, whenever you first said that, when you first held it up, I was like, "Going, holy crap, that thing is thick." But like yeah. you said, with that cutaway, it's going to make it feel smaller. Yeah, I've yet to find a case for them. So, <laughs> but it's loud though. Yeah, that's is, it, is it really loud? Yeah, I mean, it's... I was going to say it has well, to be like a crap. It has to growl. I mean, just I mean. We're still going to... setting it up. Um, right. You know, you can shave braces after the guitar is built to kind of shape the EQ and sure make it louder. Um, you know, we I put this access hole, so anybody that ever works on these can get their arm all the way up into the guitar to work hmm. on. Was that something huh. that you thought of after the fact? That yeah. that's why. No, I'm saying this is one of those things that you came up with dealing with everybody else's crap. It's right. like going. Put a yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, and it's it's a bolt on neck, but um, you know what you could do too. That it was interesting with having that access panel there that actually that would allow you to if you wanted to electrify it, mm -hmm. you know, give you options to do that. Use that panel as you know. I don't know underneath would be kind of odd, but anyway. Yeah, it, but it's beautiful. So many things in it. It's hard to kind of go through them. All. Our bracing, our own bracing design. Right. Uh, using kind of aviator truss, you know, with big holes in the brace. Our braces right. are taller than normal, uh, but allow for much more projection. That's kind of the, you know, and it, I went to an industrial technology school and so some of my physics and industrial technology coming right. through. Um, but well, yeah. I hope I, I, it looks good. Like I said, I hope it, I hope it, uh, 
works out for you too. And like I said, it, it's one of those things I had saw you had it. I think you were just in the stages of, of putting the, the outer part of it and you were like going something about something new or something like that. So I had, I knew you were, had been working on it, but I didn't know how far you got on it. So yeah. interesting as hell. That's the one I'll never sell. Um, right. But we've got one right after it. That will probably be the first production one. Uh, you, what is the, were you looking at price wise on something like that? You have any guesstimate on what around, you're going to around uh, 45 to okay. 5,000. Okay. Not a bad price. Yeah, that was going to be my question. What, so what are the, like you have one sitting there to your right. Mm -hmm. um, what, I don't know what they run. So I mean, I'm, 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 a, I'm a guitar ignorant person. So yeah, that looks it, like a Gresh. So yeah, it's one of our, the same. it's got a big SPO. You know, it. Yeah. It's a, so is it's that what a, the, is that the Stella? This is the Maryland. Maryland. I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, I mean, these run probably in the 35 up to four thousand dollar range. Okay. Uh, we we have base prices and uh, yeah. any upgrades or any you know details they want put into the guitar more than what is already in the base prices. Right. Uh, but I'm always uh, very honest and try to realize that you know musicians aren't uh rich so and <laughs> most especially, any, especially anymore well right. i mean bill and too i mean just to give you a little kind of insight too it's it's like buying a car you, know, you can buy your base car and your base car runs great drives great lasts forever but then hey you want leather seats Hey, you want this? You want that? And that, and that's the same way with on you know on mine. You know there there were things on there. That thing was, I mean, that thing was. <laughs> you had that one to the hilt. I mean, whenever it was you know being made originally, and like I said, I just went ahead and it's like, yeah, I'll just go with it. We'll go with that. <laughs> but it is. It's, it's how much you want to do in bindings. How much you want to you know, what kind of you want any fancy uh, uh, in your your frets and and you know, or not frets, but your um, not damn it, help me out there. Anyway, any kind of wood work. Well, right. That's really cool. I mean, it's it's amazing to me. It really, truly is. Thanks. So, so, of all the models that you've made, uh, Jake, what is your best seller of them? Like the you got the Maryland, the Stella, the and mine is what the uh, Earth. Mm -hmm. All right. Of yeah. of all the ones, what do you sell more of? You think? Or the have Maryland, made? probably. The Maryland. That's. The, the Maryland is uh, what we sold to Chet Roberts at Three Doors Down, and we made one for Alex Lifeson, um, Boogie, uh, Jonathan Boogie Long down in New Orleans. Amazing guitarist. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really versatile guitar. You know, you can kind of do everything from country, rockabilly. Uh, we built one of these, or sorry, this mirroring. Um, yeah. <laughs> Built one of these Marylands for Fozzie, uh, metal band. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we just didn't put the F-holes in it and put some really hot pickups. So um, it's, yeah, kind of the Swiss Army knife of our guitars. So that one there, is it is it, is it all, is it completely hollow body or is it is it semi-hollow with like kind of like a... Yeah, it's... All uh, the way through... It's semi-hollow. It's got a center block. Center, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Block ash. Um, we have made one that's our scarlet is the full hollow body is thicker almost like right. a jazz guitar um, um but it doesn't have a center block it just has bracing built in the top <clears throat> but we had we just recently made a maryland without a center block and it was really interesting a jazz player out of louisville um jazz blues okay. guy. do you have any that smoke like when you play them they <laughs> you could. Oh my God! Oh, I didn't even know you had that shirt on. Can you see that shirt? Back up a little bit. Back up. That's cool, man. I forgot he had the Ace. He has the Ace Freely shirt on. <laughs> I've done some weird tricks. Classic, man. LED lights and uh, different things, but no, I haven't gotten to smoke or flamethrowers. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think bass is, is flamethrower. Is, is it Nikki Six have a flamethrower that he attaches to one of his bases or something yeah. like that? He yeah. just has a flamethrower, I think. It's, he's, it's insane. He's annoying. You don't <laughs> Whatever. Want to to him anyway. Uh, so if a person wants to get a guitar built, 
Jacob, how long, how long is it from the process? How long does the process take? I mean, I got kind of into it halfway, you know, whenever we did your, but you were also busy with other things at the time. And it was just, it, it, you know, it was what it was. But if a person would come out to you and you sit down and you did it, how long do you expect to get one out the door? Well, I, we have un, nearly 20 different models, uh, sure. some easier to build, some more complicated. Uh, the acoustics, I, I think it's going to be about an eight month lead time on those. Wow. Um, and, you know, the Maryland, like a, just to find something in the middle. Uh, like a curve that you have right uh, is a three month three to four month process um and then i get busier so you know it's i try to keep moving on everybody's guitar but also work on my cue and work on first person first um but you know sometimes you walk out in the shop and there's a thousand things you have to do and i get sidetracked and I always have to get back <laughs> focused. You know, one, one thing I like, one thing I did like about it, like I said, because I, I really didn't know when I got into it how long it was going to take. And you know, like I say it was one of those things where you know it could take three or four months, and you know it, it was end up it was a little bit longer, but um, it was it was really cool because you would you would out of the blue I get a text, hey look at this, you know here's here's what we did today, or here's here's what we're at, you know. So it was really cool getting those updates. Because matter of fact, I think. Uh, one of those trips we took, guys, when we took one of the, was it to Atlanta or to Nashville? Maybe it was in Nashville. Yeah, I got pictures right beforehand. I was like showing you guys. And I was like, oh, look at this, look at this, you know. So it was, it was really cool. And I was, I, it was the same way the guys from uh, Nashville, the, the guys from the East Freely Band, and I, was, I was showing those guys. Oh, my God, this thing's so cool, you know. And of course, <laughs> they were going to see it this summer, but then that all that, you know, COVID basically cut that shit out so we <laughs> we didn't do anything go anywhere nobody's seen anything this summer so <laughs> i really feel for all the musicians and right. all the stage hands production people oh my gosh it's just i mean the whole industry so did has it did it affect you some too as far as people ordering things or it... well it slowed down for a while uh and you know that we started sweating you know what's going to happen uh but luckily people have a bunch of guitars sitting in their house and they didn't worked on. Right. Those started coming in. Uh, the commissions kind of died off until recently. Um, but I mean, it, just life in general is right. totally different. So, oh yeah. It's so been... do you ever, do you get to go to any like the NAM shows or any of those kind of things to, to pimp the product? Yeah, we were a NAM member for a couple of years and went to several. Uh, but Nam, in my opinion, it was a lot of fun to go. I, I still go, uh, but we don't showcase anymore. Uh, in my mind, I feel like it's more for bigger companies that can produce a lot <laughs> more than what we can. Um, we did really great the one year we fully showcased and had tons of orders. But we, you just so small of a company, we couldn't even fill, you know, get the capital to start building all this. Um, but I still go to uh, see what's new, see everybody that I've met. It's a great way to meet suppliers for hardware mm -hmm. and different things that you use to build a guitar. Right. Because you were, I think you had told me before, whenever you showed me that guitar, that when that guy backed out on it, that you were going to build that, go ahead and finish building it and then use it as a, Cause it's so unique. You were going to say, this is here, this is something we can really do, you know? So mm -hmm. you're going to use it as a, as a, I guess what a show model or what have you. Yeah. And, I, and then I just said, no, I want it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> Which I'm glad I had. I'm glad I did. It's, it's been one of the, like I said, it's been one of the, uh, it's one of the best guitar purchases I've ever made. I, like I said, I've been very happy with it. And like I said, I've, it's been zero trouble haven't had to come back out and like i said I, I did break my buddy out rodney he brought a it was a parlor guitar out and it had a broken it needed a new um uh, oh, damn it uh, bridge on it was it a bridge on it no <laughs> but the guy that plays guitar all the time no, doesn't no, no. have a clue what the hell the parts <laughs> no, no, are no 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 i mean i know the word bridge but anyway, <laughs> but anyway but he brought some stuff out to you and you fixed it for him and, it, and he was very very happy with the repairs so like i said 
not only do you you do great work as far as building guitars, you do great work fixing guitars and doing stuff. So I know if I ever have any issues, I know who I know who to go to. I have a my go to guy. <laughs> it's not Jason, it's Jacob. <laughs> it's cool, man. So anyway, um well dude, I tell you what, can you uh pimp whatever you want to pimp here, your your website, um anything else you want to do? Well um you know I <laughs> I do everything. We had an employee uh, for a while that of course coronavirus had to let go of him. Wow. Uh, but he was a big proponent of the acoustics. He went to an acoustic based luthier school up in Michigan and uh, kind of kicked my ass and said, you need to build acoustics. And everybody had been asking if I did, uh, but it's a different realm. I mean, it's, but we made it through that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting these out into the public eye. Um, our website, um, like I said, I, I have to wear many hats. I'm the owner. I'm the guy that sweeps the floors now, and I'm the guy that <laughs> tries to keep up with her books and in between, you know, whatever's happening in the house and virtual learning. So uh, we'd like to update our website a lot more. But our Facebook stays pretty up to date, and Instagram. Uh, so, so what are the, what are those? Is it Harper Guitars or is it? Mm -hmm. How do you find you? Uh, just Harper Guitars uh, on Facebook and Instagram. HarperGuitars.com for our website. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, man, that's some beautiful stuff. Yeah. I don't play, but I can recognize I I can recognize the the beauty. I really want to. I one of these days, Jacob, I'm gonna have to make a trip out to move. I want to. I'm gonna check out that acoustic. I really I like it's, that a lot. It's ten miles, dude. It's not a trip. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, I know it's not a hard trip. I'll make it out there at some point. You go, you go further for further for a piece of beef. Actually, and I'll bring <laughs> I'll bring I'll bring Alan along with me because he's a bass player and and you make some badass looking basses too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah we've so, got a new line of basses coming out too. Um, I've been designing those. I haven't started started cutting anything. Right. Met through some fan frets, six string all the way up, four string up to six. So hopefully we can get those out soon. Well, that's cool. cool. All right, dude. Well, we sure appreciate you uh, being on tonight. And uh, like I said, I'll sure be out there soon. And like I said, I'll bring this bearded dude with me, this Billy Gibbons looking mofo with me. <laughs> You know, think, I'm sure he'd like to check I us. get called ZZ Tate all the time. ZZ Tate. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. I didn't, you know, I never thought about that. How come I didn't pick up on that before? I don't know uh, why I didn't. Slow, I, dude. Is, I know. It's pretty so funny. Slow. Well, uh, J, uh, JTB's Groovy Records room, right. that guy, he's the first yeah. one that started calling me that. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah. Say that again, Insane. Jacob. You have a glorious beard. You know, Thank I got about you. this far, but you I You don't want to smell it, though. It, it don't, don't. I'm glad you can't. This is not. <laughs> I'm teasing. It smells like work. summer sausage and dried cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so All not right. going there. We'll hang around here for a second. Let's hang around here for a second, Jacob. All right, folks. Y'all know the deal. Visit us on agesofrock.com. Check out our social media and past episodes. And until next time, peace out. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks. <laughs>